Welcome to my channel. This is New World Tarot and I'm Queen. Um, I'm here because I wanted to discuss um, a topic that I think that a lot of people, more content creators, should be discussing when it comes to the whole issue between black men and black women. Now, one of the things that I hear often when it comes to the arguments of black men abandoning their responsibilities to protect provide and lead their women and children is that black women abandoned them black women traded on them black women turned their backs on them and this is the argument that a lot of young and older black men i've heard use this argument as to why they feel like they're not responsible for what is happening within the black community so i wanted to um bring forward this really interesting um it's a little short kind of docuseries that i found just, you know, looking around on the internet, it kind of popped up. And um, when I heard it, I was like, you know, I think this will be very interesting to see what you guys think about this content. So we're going to get right into it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the thumbs up button. All right, here we go. Oh, just so you guys know, um, I will be commentating throughout the, the docu um, series. So if you don't like somebody talking in the middle of the video, then, you know, just click off. Go find it yourself. And, you know, great. But for those of you who follow me and fuck with me, y'all already know what it is. All right. Here we go. Listen, the role of women in activism is imperative to acknowledge. It's not just some inclusivity thing we do just because we think we're supposed to do it. We bring it up because it reflects what actually happened. Black women were at the forefront of community organizing and Black thought, both before and after the Civil Rights Movement. The women of the Black Power Movement brought to light the significance of what we call intersectionality, which is a way of saying that women experience the world differently than men do because of misogyny and gender discrimination. And then if you multiply that by the consequences of being a Black woman, then you often find that the world treats you even worse. And intersectionality also applies to all different parts of identity, including sexual orientation, nationality, and socioeconomic status. The Black Power Movement was a global activist movement that involved three essential pillars, Black community control, Black self-determination, and Black self-defense. Black power has historically been characterized as being anti-white, but that's not really the case. The Black Power Movement was an outgrowth of Black nationalist thought that privileged Black self-determination and pride, but it was not inherently racist in its scope. It recognized the role of white supremacy in everyday society and essentially encouraged Black people to create spaces for themselves in a society that was constantly excluding them from its services, resources, and institutions. Inspired by folks like Malcolm X, the Black Power Movement encouraged Black people to stop worrying about inclusion and to start creating spaces for themselves. The idea which is something that a lot of black women I hear these days is saying that we need to stop trying to include ourselves in the system and we need to remove the actual answer that we see is removal of ourselves from the system. It seems that throughout history, the more black people push to include themselves into the history of America and into the into the dynamic of the American system, the more we get pushed back. So that's one of the things that I've been hearing a lot of black women saying as of lately. And I've also heard this from women in the past who were fighters for the rights and freedoms of African American people. Okay. Power was not a new phenomenon, but it did become more popular during the 1960s. Its popularization stem from the decolonization of the African continent, disillusionment with the shortcomings of the civil rights movement, and a recognition of the decades-long trauma of Jim Crow. Many Black Americans were struggling to find social and economic stability after generations of state-sanctioned segregation. While many believe that the civil rights movement did formally end Jim Crow, one of the major critiques of the movement and its legislative victories, like the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the Fair Housing Act of 1968, was that it did not adequately address issues of poverty, housing inequality, unemployment, over-policing, and a lack of educational resources. And these are all things that disproportionately impacted Black communities. And while the Black Power Movement was a political phenomenon, it was also a cultural one. It provided a space for Black Americans looking for validation of their culture, affirmation of their dignity, acknowledgement of their beauty and intelligence, and a collective assertion 
of pride in a world that often devalued them. Many organizations within the Black Power movement have been framed as male-dominated and sexist. And in many ways, this is true. These organizations weren't perfect by any means. Sexism did manifest itself, both structurally and interpersonally, and it should be acknowledged and taken seriously. At the same time, it's also true that women were present, vocal, and influential in the ranks of all of these organizations, just as they were during the civil rights movement and are in today's Black Lives Matter movement. Again, both can be true, and it's always important for us to sit with that complexity, not run away from it. Many women joined these organizations in order to push the men to be more thoughtful and equitable with regard to sex and gender. And the organizations were better for it. The women members were the ones who pushed the group in the direction of a more radical interpretation of what it means to work toward full liberation for all black people, not just black men. <coughs> Excuse me. So what he just brought forward is the women, the black women who were the members of a lot of the organizations um, that were for the rights and liberties of black people entered into those groups in order to push the men to work towards full liberation for all black people, not just black men. OK, so basically these women historically were saying, listen, if you want to be free, you can't just fight for yourself. You have to fight for the entire group of people. If you want to be free, you have to fight for your entire freedom. You can't just go and fight the court system for you to lay up with Becky. OK, that's what these women were saying. If you want full liberation, you have to do it and you have to do it right and you have to own it. OK, so that is not dropping the ball. Let's talk about the role of black women in one of these organizations. Let's. The black Panther Party here in the Thought Bubble. The Black Panther Party, originally known as the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, was founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale in October 1966 in Oakland, California. The first female member was J. Tarika Lewis. She was a 16-year-old high school student when she joined the party in 1967. 16-year-old black girl was the first female member of the Black Panther Party. Pay attention. Participated in their political education classes, attended rallies, and was an artist for their newspaper. She played an integral role in shaping how the Black Panther Party was publicly viewed, as well as how they viewed themselves. As the A 16-year-old girl was responsible for the way that the Black Panther Party was publicly viewed as well as the way that they viewed themselves. A 16-year-old Black girl was responsible for the way a bunch of grown men viewed themselves. Pay attention. More women joined. Some of the most notable women were Kathleen Cleaver, Erica Huggins, and Elaine Brown. Kathleen Cleaver was a former member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, commonly known as SNCC. <coughs> Cleaver was the communications secretary and the first female member of the Black Panthers' main decision-making body. Erica Huggins had multiple leadership roles, becoming a leader in the Los Angeles chapter and founding the chapter in New Haven, Connecticut. Elaine Brown was appointed the new leader of the entire Black Panther Party in 1974, after Huey Newton fled prosecution to Cuba. Even though she faced quite a bit of sexism during her tenure, she led the party for three years and also established the Black Panther Party's Liberation School. She led the Black Panther Party for three years, a woman. Okay, now if you go around listening to these black men crying all over the place, they will tell you that black women dropped the ball, black women abandoned them at the most important time in history, black women never had their black back, black women don't fight for them, black women don't stand up for them. You let them tell it, honey, black women were non-existent during this time. But this woman, this black woman, led the Black Panther Party for three years. Pay attention, y'all. Especially you black women, pay attention. Thanks, Thought Bubble. Needless to say, women were a huge part of the Black Panther Party and the Black Power Movement more broadly. And that wasn't all of them. There was Charlotte Hill O'Neill, a musician, poet, and artist 
who was a major figure in the international section of the Black Panther Party. There was Asada Shakur, who led the Black Panther Party in Harlem. She was later charged with killing a police officer in 1973 and fled to Cuba where she maintains her innocence. And of course, there's Angela Davis, who remains incredibly influential through her speaking and writing and as a mentor for young activists today. Women ultimately composed two thirds of the Black Panther Party membership. Did you hear that? Women composed two thirds of the Black Panther Party membership. And they played a role in every part of the Black Panther Party. So when you see those photos of men standing there armed in front of buildings, ready to fight and protesting for people to get out of jail and things of that nature, women were right there on the front line too. They highlighted the men. They did it on purpose. They wanted you to believe that black women were not there. They wanted you to think that black women were not there. We were two thirds of the Black Panther Party. Make it make sense. Black men who run around here saying that black women abandoned you, they dropped the ball, they kicked you out the house for welfare. Tell me how this makes sense. How can someone support you and abandon you at the same damn time? That's an oxymoron. Tell me, how does it make sense? Okay, because in one breath they'll go, oh, I don't want to be with no black women because black women never supported us. Black women never had our black. Black women ain't do this and black women ain't do that. Black women did this and black women did that. And black women some hoes and black women is just too damn black. But black men named their party the Black Panther Party. If you didn't like how we looked, why did you name your party, the Black Panther Party. What was the point in that? Why would you create a group for Black people to take pride in themselves and then when they do, you tell them that they're ugly? I want to know. The black men that are running around with all of these relationship coaching and sucking on Kevin Samuel's dead balls. I want to know, why are you lying? Why are you lying to these young boys? Why are you lying to these young girls? Why are you lying to the generations that are coming up about history? Who gave you the right to go and rewrite history and lie? Tell these children the truth. Tell them that not only did we lead the Black Panther Party, but we led Black Lives Matter. And we led every movement that you ever had. They just put a man in the forefront. Tell the truth. It'll set you free. Pay attention. 40 chapters and their influence within the organization continued to grow. Many of the head editors of the Black Panther Party's newspaper were women. And many of these women pushed the Panthers to include child care centers for each local chapter. Black women. The black women had to push the men to include child care centers like they weren't aware that they were the ones running around getting all the women pregnant. Like somebody make it make sense, please. Somebody make this shit make sense. It doesn't make sense. The things that come out of black men's mouth is just lies on top of lies on top of fucking lies. When you go and you start researching the history, when you go and you read the Moynihan Report, when you go and you look at the history of slavery and emancipation, you find out that everything that these men sit here and tell themselves is a lie. This is what they do. They lie because it make them feel good on the inside parts. Pay attention. We're not only involved in political organizations tied to the Black Power Movement, but also artistic and cultural ones. In these spaces, Black women writers and artists use Black Power ideologies to help express themselves. Through music, literature, and theater, Black women told stories of their lived experiences and outlined how they shaped their political philosophies. Much of this was done through the Black Arts Movement. The Black Arts Movement 
lasted from 1965 till about 1975. It was founded by the writer Leroy Jones, who was later known as Amiri Baraka. He also founded the Black Arts Repertory Theater and School. Now, you notice how every time black women create something, some black man pulls forward and puts his name at the forefront. Black women were the ones that were creating the arts. Black women were the ones that were writing the books. Black women were the ones that was writing the poetry. Black women were the ones that were venting, okay, through create, creatively, as opposed to going out and being violent, like a lot of them choose to do. And a black man stapled his name to the front of this movement. You see... You see how history is just hijacked by anybody, but yet women have equal rights. They tell us, they tell us that because we believe in and support feminism, that because we don't do the work that they do, we need to sit our ass down and shut up. And even if I do the same job as him, I should be paid less because I got a vagina. This is the shit that they sit around and talk about, y'all. This is the shit that men sit around and talk about. And black men should be the last ones on the totem pole to talk anything when they the least employed in the whole fucking United States. Costing the government $50 billion the fucking over the last 20 years. $50 billion a year is what they've been costing the U.S. government. Black women are coming the number one entrepreneurs, the number one millionaires in the United States of fucking America. But we don't get credit for shit. Black women, this is how they repay you. They tell you you're too black. They tell you you too ugly. They tell you you too nasty. They tell you you too stupid. They tell you your education, your degree don't mean shit. These are the men that you're giving birth to, black women. Y'all having fun yet? If you having fun, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. This is ridiculous. At this point, it makes me wonder what exactly is going on through the mind of the average black woman. This is what I want to know. How can somebody come, usurp your authority, take take responsibility for everything that you do? Every time you're standing on the front line, black women were getting bust upside their head. Black women were going to jail. Black women were water hosed. Black women were hung from trees. Black women were toe tagged just like the men were. So how can you just disregard everything black women went through and jump straight to Martin Luther King, Malcolm X? Uh, uh, Marcus Garvey, how do, uh, how? And then black women will sit here and second this notion and be like, oh yeah, black women gave up their men for welfare. Where? White people, let me tell you something about white people. White people write shit down. Black people might not write shit down, but white people write shit down. And white people will tell you what the fuck happened. Ain't no black woman ran off on no black man and left him for no fucking welfare. You couldn't provide, sir. Just like you didn't know how to protect yourself. That's why it took a woman to come and lead the Black Panther movement. Let's keep it real, y'all. The lies is keeping up us on the bottom. The lies is keeping the black community the way it's looking. The lies is keeping these women getting toe tagged. They're lying. Black women, when you stop believing this narrative that you're the problem, when you stop accepting the narrative that you're the problem, and you start looking and paying attention and seeing what's really real, they say, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. They used to say that when I was a little girl. I'm starting to think that rings true. It used to irritate me when I was younger because I was like, I love to read. But it started to make me, I, I'm really starting to believe there's truth to that because I don't think y'all read. I think what y'all do is y'all listen to y'all boyfriends. Y'all listen to the dude that's cute down the street. Y'all listen to y'all husbands. Y'all listen to a bunch of uneducated men tell y'all about a history that they know absolutely nothing about. I bet you the average black man don't even know a black woman ran the Black Panther Party for three years. I bet he did, uh, the average man don't even know that the Black Panther Party was two-thirds women. That mean only one-third was men. If you paid attention to that movie that Spike Lee did, it looked like there were no women down with the damn Black Panther Party. Th this is... Th <sighs> y'all, the delusion is it's, it's annoying. I want y'all to get it together. I want y'all to pay attention. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to open your hearts. I'm not trying to attack anybody, okay? I'm not. I know sometimes the truth can feel like an attack, but that's not my point. 
The point of me coming on here and bringing this information to you, black women, I'm trying to help you to heal. When are you going to start looking at yourself and stop waiting for somebody else to validate you? When? When are you going to stop believing the lies? When? When are you going to stop giving birth to poverty children? When? Y'all do all this damn complaining about what black men doing and how they don't take care of their kids and how he beat you up and he cheated on you and he did this and he did that. But every time I look up one of y'all pregnant, why, why, why? If you, if you haven't fixed the community, if the community is not in a condition where a child can thrive and have the same opportunities as any other child of any other nationality, it is irresponsible to give birth to children. I don't give a shit what their gender is. It's irresponsible. Listen, y'all need to get it together. I'm just saying. 